Yeah. Okay. I don't. Yeah, that's kind of how things work in our wonderful free society, isn't it? Okay. I, I know. <laughs> so, uh, what's uh, so you, what what fun evangelist door to door evangelist stories do you have to share with us? There must oh there must God. be some. We get, we got one lady one time, and she had a kid with her. And this time I answered the door, he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, are you selling Girl Scout cookies or candles or something? And she's like, do you even have Jesus in your heart? And I'm just like, N no. <laughs> I want cookies. Like, I talked to her, and she had this lady for like 10 yeah. minutes about how I wanted cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should yeah, tell her. Come uh, back with cookies, and we'll have a chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah I that. Know. And, um, Say I had Jesus in my spleen one day. Do you have to go? Sorry. No. Go ahead. Oh, another thing that's funny to me is that they only tear off his atheist sticker as if they don't understand what theology and biology are. That's or funny. They don't understand what born okay the first time means. So his atheist sticker has been torn off like five or six times now, but those stickers are intact, and it's like. <laughs> well, uh, probably not. No. What uh, I love, what I love about what you're saying, Joe, is that last bumper sticker, "Born again, born right the first time." Yeah. That's yeah. the whole point. We are okay. Human beings exactly. are okay. There is not anything inherently wrong with being a human being, and making mistakes is how we learn. It is not. Exactly. It's not a crime, and it's okay. And for somebody exactly. to convince us that being human is requires some sort of external fix. And th they can sell that to people, and that they instill children with that kind of self depravity. Oh, it's sick. It's yeah. So, have you watched Jesus Camp? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we oh did. My God. I it's agree. Just, it's disgusting. Like yes. it makes me like sad for them. Have yeah. you ever thought about doing fun stuff when these guys turn up? Like like <laughs> answering the door in some sort like some kind of, you know, like have your boyfriend answer the door and like wearing one of your dresses or something, <laughs> or just just doing stuff to mess with their heads. <laughs> Yeah, or something like that, or yeah, or, or just like with a little baby bonnet with a pacifier in his mouth and diapers. And, you should. I mean, if you get them regularly, leash, yeah. And you're like, you know, what? We're busy. Right? These are YouTube yeah. moments for that, sure. I mean, just and and YouTube all these things. It would just do be it. great. Do, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it, Joe. And then email us. I'll do it. And I'll post it. Yes, do. that is what YouTube is for. Don't you see? Yeah, email us. We'll put you on the blog. Uh -huh. <laughs> They will be here next Saturday at like 7 or 8 in the morning. There you go. I, I so totally want to live where you, you guys live. You need to plan your sets and your scripts and everything and get uh -huh. that going. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's crazy. And I came from a Bible Belt, like Branson, mm -hmm. Missouri. It was like a huge mm -hmm. Bible Belt town. And I never got door knockers. That's and funny. now that I'm back in Texas. And Dallas is a big city. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's hysterical. That is, that's, um, I, I, it, it would almost be worth living in Dallas for. There are some good, there are some good door-to-door -door, um, videos on YouTube. <laughs> you should look them up at some point. There's some people mm -hmm. that do door-to-door -door evangelist videos that are somewhat funny. I'm telling you, Joe, it would be a big hit. Yeah. You, you, you got to do it. It was great talking to you. Thank you for yeah. calling. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that was okay. Bye -bye. hilarious. Bye. Oh, that okay. was, that's and so awesome. Okay, and so now we've got Clifford in Chattanooga. Clifford. Okay, Clifford. Hello. Hello. How are you? Thanks for waiting. Um, if you if you want to hear really good evangelists or fundamentalist stories, I've got quite a few. And so Chad Rowe will be happy to know I'm a Christian, but I'm one of those liberal, more progressive Christians. At least I think I am myself. Okay. Then. But my question goes more along the lines of the color before the last. But I just kind of wanted to know what do you guys think about the whole progressive Christianity movement or what I perceive is there seems to be a few theologians and a few New Testament scholars that have this more progressive view on things like the Bible and mm -hmm. belief and all this, all these sort of things. I did a blog post recently called, Is Cherry Picking Okay? Um, and that's usually what that's labeled. When somebody goes in and says, I'm just going to reject the parts of the Bible that seem heinous to me and go with the ones that are good. And I compared it to joining the KKK because you support the social events but you're not really a racist. Um, it, if that is logical, then I suppose to a person that does it, it's fine. In my view, I would have trouble holding up a Bible and saying I support this book and then but, denouncing but, but, but. particular verses that I know are in there. I mean, there are things that are in there that are not, in my opinion, morally defensible. And for a person to call themselves a Christian, they are coming forward. Basically, when you say that, people accept 
that as you are promoting the Bible and what's in the Bible and the God of the Bible and the Jesus of the Bible and all of it. If you don't, then my question is, why label yourself a Christian? Why not just say, I'm a theist, I believe in a God, but I really don't think that God that's described in the Bible is a good guy, so that's not my God. Well, one, like, Episcopal bishop, his name is John Shelby Spong. Mm -hmm. um, the way he looks at it is he calls it the Bible or any sort of religious text is a way to point to God, not a sort of this all-encompasses God and all scripture is inerrant and that's sort, of, that's sort of the way I feel, but now to answer your question, why would you call yourself a Christian now? I don't know. I mean, like, because I never thought of a Christian as someone that says, oh, okay, I've got the Bible, it's an errand, I'm going to accept it all regardless, despite anything else. But I don't know if you can legitimately call yourself a Christian. Fundamentalists will say, no, you're not a Christian, and I've got a lot of that because I don't accept the Genesis account of creation. Mm-hmm. Well, just for the record, I'm not saying that you're not a Christian. I, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. say that if a person cherry-picks that they shouldn't call themselves a Christian. I'm simply saying that when a person says they're a Christian, most people consider that they accept the doctrines that are laid out in the Bible. That's the book. Just like if, if a person told me he was a Muslim, I would think that he agrees with what's in the Quran. Okay. So, it, yeah. but, but I do think that, you know, it's fair for a person like you to say, well, that's not how I look at it. I don't accept it as totally, you know, 100% correct. But then the question usually comes up, which is, how do you know which parts are real and which parts aren't? Like, which parts do you use and which parts don't you? And that normally boils down to, I stick with the parts that I think are morally good and correct, and I toss the parts that seem really evil and horrible. And what that shows Based me on is that you've arrived at yeah, basically you're just using your own religion. morality then in that case to yeah. then define what you think is okay in the Bible, what you don't think is okay in the Bible. And my point would be, why not just go with yourself then instead of pretending that a book is telling you what's right? Because ultimately, if uh, the, the only problem that I have with, with folks who, who call themselves liberal or progressive Christians from a standpoint of the ideas that they espouse is that... You, you finally get to a point where you, you can look at them and say, you appear to have thought about all of these things, and why at this point do you really think that you need what this religion is selling you anymore? You have come up with your own notions of right and wrong, uh, not, but, but, but based upon rational thought, right? Based upon an understanding of things like the consequences of actions and empathy towards your fellow man. And at a certain point, you, you have understood that, yes, you, you're, uh, you can be a good person. You'll make mistakes in life. You'll sometimes do bad things that you regret and are ashamed of, but you take those as lessons that you learn and you move on. You become the steward of your own personal growth. And so at a certain point, once you really have a handle on all of those ideas, why, why then, where, where is the point at which you, you still feel that it is necessary to latch on to whatever, is, whatever it is that Christian belief is, is trying to sell you. At what point is this still uh, you know, a, a worthwhile product when uh, it is no longer really informing your, your moral choices necessarily because you can look at the Bible and say, okay, well, this is in there and that's in there and that is very demonstrably wrong and not something that I would ever condone. Uh, at a certain point, does it simply become rooted in the basic emotional need that I think is at a lot of religion, which is I like the idea of a celestial parent figure watching over me. It is a comforting idea. It, uh, makes, it is a thing that makes the universe feel less large and cold and empty. That sort of thing. Are we, have we stripped religion, Christianity, whichever religion you, you subscribe to, to its fundamental essentials? Uh, at which point, you know, the, the doctrine doesn't matter anymore, so it can just be, you know, it can, in, uh, your own definition of it at that point. Oh, so that, and that's what I've always found uh, unusual about Spong. I mean, I've read Spong's stuff. I've listened to him speak on television. And I just say to myself, why doesn't this guy just go whole hog? I mean, he's, practic he's like 97% atheist. You know, what, in, <laughs> what is the bit that's keeping him sort of tied down to it? Is it, just that, is it just that little bit of an emotional hook that it has in him that there is the comforting aspect of the, the belief and how he likes to imagine Jesus must have been and how he likes to imagine God must be? And the comfort that that gives him, that with all of his intellect, he, that, that still has its hooks in him? I don't know. I wish I could say. So, um, 
Well, I know it's wrong. Like he doesn't really, he doesn't seem to have even that idea of a parent figure in the sky. Right. I saw a video with him, and he was saying, "Why don't we change God to the definition of something that's at the heart of life and the basis of existence itself?" It's sort of like that whole Paul Helich idea that God can't just be a being; God has to be the basis of being itself. Mm -hmm. But but I don't at know, that I point, all your probably I would. Oh, I would Go, say, go ahead. I guess there probably is like an emotional hook, mm -hmm. but I mean, I can't say that for everyone, and I'm not even sure what I would say for myself why I okay. still hold on to certain beliefs and such. I think it's different for every person who has actually took time and thought about what they believe and not just taken this leap of faith and said, oh, I'm going to believe this regardless. No matter what comes up, no matter what else happens, no matter who I meet, and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But for those who sit and think about it, I think, and they examine their own life. I know with my mother, a lot of things have happened with her where that belief sort of becomes ingrained, and it's personal for her, and it's not, some, it's not really she's latching on to a dogma, but she's latching on to something she believes is true based on her own experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think... What I would like to see religion do is, instead of being this organized, dogmatic thing, is that for people who are religious, that their religion is based on their own experience, and they're not religious based on, oh, just someone told you to be religious, and it becomes, I guess, sort of existential for each individual. Right. Well, you know, I, I usually say that just people create God in their own image, right? I mean, and, the, it, and it comes back to having that sort of parent figure concept, so... Again, maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's it, it is difficult to to give that uh, fundamental emotional need up for a lot of folks. Who knows? You know, um, that's just my Tracy. <laughs> give us the benefit of your wisdom on this. Come on. I, I tend to think that it's just something that's culturally endowed. If it wasn't indoctrinated as a, mm -hmm. as a youth, I mean, a, it, I've met so many people who were raised in secular homes since I joined ACA who didn't grow up with this idea that a God exists. And it really, in my head, reinforces that it comes from somewhere, you know, that, that it's, not, it's not something that, it, like, uh, I watched a video on, on uh, someone posted to, to uh, the Internet the other day, and they were talking about Muslims. There, there was three Muslims that were talking, and one of the guys was saying something about how there's very few verses in the Quran that deal with proving God exists. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, as an atheist, that's right, because why waste the paper since there isn't a proof of it? So mm -hmm. you wouldn't, it wouldn't get you anywhere. You can't prove it, so why would you try? Um, but his summary of that was the reason that it's not in there is because people are born inherently already believing in God, so there's no need to prove it mm -hmm. because we all already believe it. Well, I'm sure that in a Sharia law Muslim state, everybody does believe in God because if you don't, you would be killed. And so here, you know... What, what it boils down to for me is that I think that you, people are instilled with it, not that they're endowed with it. So you, you get it later in life, and then you accept it or you don't. And if you accept it, even if you go through the steps of losing religious dogmas and doctrines, you still maintain that feeling that there's a God there. And for me, personally, that feeling was very strong, and it was the last thing that I lost because I had gone out of Christianity all along, theism all the way down, and finally, it just dwindled out into, what am I looking at here? And I'm looking at a universe, and that's all I really see, and that's all that seems to be really real. And whatever I'm calling God has to be encompassed in this thing that is everything, which is the universe. And so when it got down to that point, you know, going backwards, I think what happens is when you're really tiny, they teach you God exists, and God is real, and Jesus, clap your hands, and the whole thing. And then you start to learn the apologetics and the doctrines as you get older and you can understand them. And then when it comes out in a lot of people, including myself, the doctrines and stuff go. And then that belief that was instilled at that really early age before you even could think for yourself is the last thing to go because it seems like an inherent thing. It feels like something that is just as inherent as a heartbeat. And so it's very hard to drop it because even if you intellectually think to yourself, I don't understand why I believe this. It's just this feeling that persists. And I don't know if that's your experience or not, but that was certainly mine. Well, well again, well, like, I don't think I know myself well enough to be sure, but 